better. We have our fiber. Hi there, so I'm Lori from Muscle Merino and today we're going to be making a felted vessel. So I have made two felted vessels out of one resist. Today we're going to learn how to use a resist and I'm going to add a wave shape to my felted vessel and this is optional. You could cut your vessel straight so that you end up with just a simple bowl or planter um, or dish that you could use to put trinkets in. It's basically a multi-use bowl or vessel or plant planter. Um, and I have used this resist and I wanted to show you this resist two different ways because this can be the bottom of your planter for a rounded bowl shape or you could make this the bottom and then you would get a completely different shape that might be more useful for a bag but you can still use the same shape and you can use um, different shapes for your resist to make different shaped vessels. And so what happened was I actually cut, I began making this video and I cut the resist on the wrong side and I ended up with a wrong side. <laughs> um, felted vessel. This is the original one that I'm planning to show you how to make. It's a little bit of a cute planter or a cup holder and I thought that was really cute and I find this shape not as useful. It just happened to fit this soap container um, luckily enough and so it's kind of nice to use different um, hard shapes in the end if you can find them to sh finish your felted vessel and give it a bit of a stretch and a pull and a nice shape to dry and so this one is still drying but because I cut my hole here I cut it on the wrong side I ended up with this shape and if you cut your shape with where it's meant to be as this is the top this is where i cut my wave out you'll end up with a more rounded um shape for your little vessel so two different ways now now that i've made that mistake although i have made this shape many times for bags so it's perfect for little bags and totes and phone holders and laptop lap book top cases and things like that so it's a very useful shape to make as well so i'm not sure i think i'm just going to keep it on here as this little felt Holder, not extremely practical or useful, but maybe kind of like grippy. So <laughs> maybe catches some of the water droplets so I don't have water sitting near my sink. So yeah, uh, found a use for that one. Kind of cute, little wave. So what you'll need to begin your felted vessel or anything where it's hollow inside and you're using a resist is you're going to need some um, flat foam. I have also tried to use this flat foam material and it's quite thick. And what happens when I roll it is it does tend to buckle quite easily and the corners also seem to stick out and create holes. Uh, it can be used but it just does not have as much movement as the thinner foam. So I do recommend using a thinner foam which allows the wool kind of to move and be a little bit more malleable. But you can use that foam. I thought it would be a great idea because you can use it over and over again. This you can also use over and over again if you don't cut into it when you cut your hole. For this project I'm going to be using a wool roving, a brush or combed wool roving from Ashford, and I've decided to use this roving because many people have access to this roving around the world, so you can kind of see what the finished project looks like compared to this other fiber that I have used, which is a carded wool. So I really like using the carded um, and not combed wool because once it's finished, it's more difficult to see any of the felted lines in the finished item, and it's just um, felted quite beautifully. So I do like to work with that wool. It's a little bit thicker as well. So this project, though, I ended up using the uh, Ashford well, and I know the lighter pastel colors and anything light when you're done it, it does kind of show some of the lines you can get in the felt. Um, and this felt, I know once it's dry, it's actually going to look really good, but it does, the brush fiber does tend to um, pill a little bit more, and so it will gather in spots. But you can shave it off in the end, so it's not too bad. Um, so I'm going to be using the brush roving for the felted vessel. So I'm going to split my wool roving in half. And it doesn't need to be perfect, it's just easier to work with this way. And we're going to lay out four layers of merino wool roving across our project. I have weighted my wool and it's about 20 grams, and this vessel is about 15 grams, and I did cut quite a bit off of it. So we'll just see how much I actually use of the 20 grams. So we're going to create four crosshatch layers over our resist. And by laying out my fiber, and I'm just going to go over the edges. Once I have covered my resist, I'm going to use my spray bottle or my little Doppler bottle and I'm just going to wet my project so that it's completely saturated. You can add a little bit of soap and that will just help the, help the fibers from sticking to the bubble wrap. I'm going to grab my other piece of bubble wrap and lay it bubble side down. And I'm just going to press to fully saturate the fiber. And if you haven't watched the how to felt video, I recommend you watch that video and make a piece of felt first before you begin using a resist. So I'm going to flip my project over. I'm going to lift my bubble wrap up. 
and I'm going to begin folding over all my edges. I like to fold over my edges incrementally as I go so that it doesn't completely clump. And the, if there are any spots that do clump, you can kind of just spread them out a little bit. So once my edges are folded over, I'm going to fill in in the same direction I'm going to fill it in. This time I don't need to do my edges, I just need to fill in the spaces that were missed. If I go over my edge again, then I'll have an extra edge uh, layer and it will be quite thick on the edge and thin on the inside. Once I have laid out my fiber, I'm going to spray it again so it's fully saturated. Make sure the fiber is super wet. Flip it over. And then just fold over any excess edges. And now I'm going to begin laying my fiber in that per perpendicular direction. And this is the second layer. So the first side of my second layer. And I'm going to lay my fiber out over my edges again. Once I have laid it out, I'm going to add some more water. Bubble wrap on top, bubble side down. I'm going to flip my project over and gently lift up my bubble wrap. And then I'm going to fold all my edges over. And you want your edges to be quite close to the resist, otherwise they can felt together. So now I'm on the second layer on the second side, and I'm going to fill in this side in the same direction I was laying the fiber out on the other side. Bubble side down. Make sure it's quite wet. I'm always going to flip my project over and flip over any edges, any stray edges. So now I have laid out two layers and I'm going to lay out a third layer. So I'm going to turn my project so I can lay my layer out perpendicular to my last layer. You do not need to turn your project, but I prefer to lay my fiber out um, turned. You could also just keep it as is and lay your fiber out in this direction. So I'm going to lay out my fiber on the edges again. So now I have completed layer three and I'm going to do one more layer. So you could do four layers or you could do six layers. If you do six layers, it will shrink a little bit less. So your project, final project will be a little bit bigger and it will also be thicker, which is something you might like. I decided at some point, I really liked the felt to be a little more flimsy and um, soft feeling. And I just enjoy making less difficult, longer projects. And so when you start getting thicker, the project does require a little bit more effort. And when you make the project a little bit bigger, it also requires a lot more effort as well. So I've definitely gone over my 20, 20 grams of fiber. And actually what I was planning to do was to not necessarily put fiber um, on one side because I am going to cut it off in the end. But now that I'm doing the project, I kind of feel like it's actually going to be way easier to just cover the whole resist. I guess if I'm doing a really large project, I do not need to cover the whole resist if I'm not going to do the other side. I would only need to go across the top of it and not cover this part. But because the fiber filaments are quite long, they're going to be folded over no matter what. And it's pretty much going to be covered in the end. So I, that's what I have done. I haven't actually done where I don't cover it fully. Um, and it's a little bit of a waste of fiber. There might be something to do with the fiber in the end. Um, anyway, so continuing on, I'm going to lay my last layer out perpendicular again, and I'm going to cover my edges. So one of the reasons why I'm using white is because I'm really into dyeing and hand painting my fiber these days. It's just something that I want to learn. It's something that I want to be part of my design style. And I'm leaning towards going to that instead of the pre-felt where I had originally started. I also really like structural shapes. And so I want to explore more with making shapes. And so that's why today I'm exploring the vessel because for my pre-felt challenge, I am doing a new continuation where I've changed, I've changed direction and now I'm going to make felted vessels um, until I'm kind of done with that until I've completely lost what I'm doing in that. And then I'm thinking maybe I will add some of the design elements I learned in the pre-felt challenge to the felted vessels. So now I'm beginning to combine different techniques for my design style and there are so many felting techniques that you can do and you can choose to explore and for me and my channel I do kind of feel like my 
style is sort of the basics. Um, it's just what I happen to like and enjoy. I seem to enjoy big bold shapes and I seem to enjoy minimalistic designs. I enjoy a piece of um, felt that isn't too overcrowded and I like a nice clean line and then maybe some other colors eventually. I really find that something that I tend to do when finding my art style is I tend to jump ahead. So before I made this shape, um, I mean, I could have started with not making this shape at all, but this is something I've explored in the past, so I felt comfortable doing it. But I actually went directly to adding sparkles and silk to, to, my, um, to my vessel, and I didn't really like it, but I really think it was just jumping too far ahead. Um, the silk and sparkles are actually in the middle. It didn't work that well. Um, and so I decided, no, this is like, I haven't even done a felt challenge where I explore felt sparkles and glitter under silk. So maybe I want to make 10 to 15 felt pictures using that method before I actually apply it to my felted vessel, because creating a felted vessel is a tip technique on its own, and I'm going to explore that and make 10 to 15 felted vessels as well, so that I feel more comfortable. So that is how I am trying to find my art style. And I know this isn't an art style video, so we will continue on with our felted vessel. <laughs> before I lose exactly where I'm in, I'm on the last layer. So now I'm filling it in. So I'm not going to add more water, there's so much water already in my project, but if it's not enough for you, you could add more water. And I'm going to flip it again and just fold over any of those stray edges so they don't get caught or hang off during the felting process. At this point, I sort of like to look at my edges and just see if there are any thin spots. Um, it's looking pretty good, except for this corner. So I'm going to add one more piece of wool to that corner. Flip it over. So at this stage, we have laid out four layers of wool roving. I've laid out my 20 grams plus a little bit more, which I'm sure is going to be cut off. So it's going to end up similar to this one. And we are done laying out our fiber. So at this point, this is when you want to add the design to your project, to your resist, to your felted vessel or felted bag or whatever you're making using a resist. You can, there are so many different techniques you can do to the surface of your felt. So I will not show you that in this video, but there is an optional at the end where I will work on my edges and show you how to make the wave. I'm going to add some soap to both sides. And I'm going to place my bubble wrap on top, bubble side down. I'm going to grab a pool noodle and I'm going to begin rolling my felt project. I'm going to be agitating the fiber so they intertwine and, and attach together in a very slow, progressive way. And so the pool noodle and um, no pressure is going to help assist that. So I'm not going to apply any pressure as I roll and I'm not going to push out any water. We want the water to retain in the felt. The water and soap is needed to help the fibers move and agitate. So they begin attaching together. So I'm going to roll up my project 30 times and then I'm going to turn my project. I'm going to roll 30 times on every side of my project so that it begins to attach and shrink evenly. There's not going to be a lot of shrinkage yet, but eventually it will begin to shrink. So I'm going to do my first set of 30 rolls. Then I'm going to turn my project while it's in the roll the other way and open it up and straighten things out. It can be fidgety at first straightening things out, but I promise it gets easier as you go. And so it's only the beginning that for the first round where it's a little bit of an annoyance. <laughs> so I've rolled it 30 times and I'm going to turn my project in the way I'm going to roll it again and unroll it that way. It's just a little bit easier to do. Straighten things out and then I'm going to roll it back up. So you really want the project inside to be agitating and moving. So if you hold and roll your project like this, the project inside and the wool is not going to agitate as much as if you were to keep your hands open and you're not actually grabbing the project, but you're actually just rolling the roll. And that just allows the bubble wrap and everything inside to slightly agitate. It'll be slightly moving. But this way, there is no agitation and no movement. So you do want a little bit of movement as you roll your felt. So now I've rolled it 30 times and I'm going to turn it exactly around and unroll it. And I'm going to roll it back up on the other side. If you feel you need to, you can flip your project over. Since you rolled it sort of and it's creating this kind of curve this way, you might want to um, push that curve out the other way, but it really doesn't matter that much. Um, so I'm going to roll it 30 more times. And now I'm going to just set my project back how it was at the beginning. So now I've rolled my project 30 times on each side and I've rolled my project with no pressure. So I'm going to roll it up again and roll it for another round with no pressure. 
If for any reason your project is dry or the wool is coming off your project, you're going to want to add more water. And it could be a soap thing. You might want to add a little bit more soap. If you're using merino wool, it shouldn't be a problem. It should all be sticking and beginning to agitate and begin to um, intertwine together. But if you're using a thicker fiber, sometimes it can take a little more effort to get those fibers to attach. And if you are using really big fiber, I don't really recommend you create as much, as much of a tiny project as this one. You may want to create something a little bit bigger. Now I have rolled my project for a second round and I'm going to roll it for a third round, but this time I'm going to apply a little bit more pressure and I'm just going to add a little bit of water as well because some may have come out in the felting. So another round of 30 rolls on each side, but this time with a little more pressure. By now the fibers have attached together and they're definitely not coming apart, but we need to, um, we need the fiber to begin to shrink and felt. So now we have rolled our project for three rounds, 30 times on each side, and I'm a little bit concerned still that if I take the resist out now, the felt is going to attach to the other side of my project as I roll it, and it's just going to stick and felt. So I could take the resist out now, and then as I felt it, begin to like open it up so that until it stops attaching. Um, but I'm just gonna give it a quick roll again um, inside the bubble wrap, maybe just 20 times or less, because it's going to shrink quite quickly and begin to buckle in the resist. So I'm gonna roll it 20 times on all four sides. And I'm not applying any pressure while I do this. You can already tell it is starting to buckle. So I've decided I'm going to put my bubble wrap back on top and just roll it with a full noodle one more time. But this time I'm going to apply even more pressure, but I'm going to roll it 30 times, like I did in the other rounds. And I'm just gonna add some more water. So now I have rolled my project 30 times on each side for four rounds, and I'm going to cut the hole. I feel confident that the fiber's not going to stick to the other side, and it's definitely buckled in the resist, so that's mostly how I know when to um, when to cut my hole, um, especially when it seems like the fiber has felted together and it's not going to stick. So this time I'm going to cut my hole on the square part of the resist so that I have a nice round circular bottom, like this little planter um, or cup holder there. You could cut your resist on the rounded part and then you will end up with this sort of shape which is great for bags um, it has a more narrow bottom so you could make a little purse like this um, and it will be a little bit more flimsy with the four layers and that's what i've chosen to do and you could add six layers for a nice structural piece of felt um, no matter what it is quite structural once it dries it tends to stay in this shape quite well but it is very delicate and soft and so i kind of love that i kind of look like the look of the delicate and soft Felt, and so I stick with my four layers and I'm very happy with that. But for this tutorial, I wanted to show you how to make this little guy here because I think it's just super cute. So let's do this. I'm going to cut my resist at the top area here and you don't have to cut a wave into your piece of felt, but um, you can change the shape of it if you like. But for this one, I'll be cutting a wave, but not quite yet. I'm going to just cut the hole out and I'm going to take out the resist. And I'm going to be careful to not cut the resist inside because I would really like to use this again. And I will consider adding a little piece of duct tape to the top where I'll be cutting the resist regularly so that I can reuse it over and over again. So I've already cut into it. It's very easy to cut into the resist. And so I like to take my resist out and then finish cutting the top off. So depending on the shape you want to make, you may not want to cut the top straight off. But for this tutorial, I'm going to cut the top off so it's easier to work with. So I'm going to cut both sides. And it's not a fancy cut at all, it's a rough cut because I'm going to be cutting my shapes later on. And I do this for all my resist based or sculptural felt projects, that's just how I do it, that's how I find it easiest. So now I'm going to begin rolling my felt in the bubble wrap without the resist and that'll just allow it to shrink up quite quickly. So I'm going to do about 15 rolls on each side. So you can see it's starting to buckle a little bit, so it's good to just give it a bit of a stretch and also open it up and make sure it's not sticking to the other side. And it's not, so it's fine. And I'm not quite done with it yet. I'm going to roll it in the opposite direction. Now you could use your pool noodle to roll it to avoid the crinkles, or you could use a wooden dowel. Then I will flip it and roll it in the other direction. to the side and I'm going to open 
my project up. So at the moment it's laying like this and I want to get the edge creases out. So I'm going to turn my project like this and grab both sides and pull them. So it's exactly this a little bit of a boat shape. And now my crease is down in the center and I'm just going to begin rolling my project. Um, it's not perfect and not fancy looking. I also like to spread out that crease and give it a little pull, a little tug. And I'm just going to roll my project up while pulling this crease out. Um, it doesn't really need to be fancy. I'm also going to remove my bubble wrap because I really enjoy the felt towel. I mean, I really enjoy the towel and I enjoy the grip that the towel provides when felting. I'm just going to roll about 10 rolls. And it's not fancy. The felt kind of falls apart. It opens up. It's not perfect. It takes a little bit to get used to. And so I'm going to flip it the other way, inside out, and then roll it again. Ten more rolls. And then I'm going to roll it the other way. And so I'm rolling all four sides again, just like I did with the pool noodle. Um, but this time it's a bit wonky on one side and it's all kind of clustering together. But that's why we don't want to apply too much pressure. We want to roll it quite lightly. I will flip it to the other side and give it another roll. Um, also when working on the towel, I tend to use a little bit more water because the water can go into the towel and I like to have my project nice and wet. So another technique I use to get the creases out is I roll the project on itself. So you can kind of see here how it's moving on itself and that actually creates a really nice felted finish. It creates a nice dense piece of felt. I might just give it a little bit more of a stretch. And I'm going to turn my project back to the way it was and I'm going to continue rolling it in this shape on all four sides. And it's shrinking up quite quickly now as I roll it on my towel. You can flip it over if you like. I really like to get these ends nice and tight because they do tend to stretch more than the bottom. And they often end up a little bit thinner as well, um, but we want to bulk it up nice so that when we cut it, our shape kind of stays in place, our little wave that we've made. So I'm just going to apply that rolling technique again. You can also begin tossing your felt at this point, and that'll just allow the fibers to bind up a little bit more evenly together in, in place without a directional roll. And if your felt's getting quite dry, you can always just dip it in your water because it needs to be nice and wet. If you're working with cut edges or frayed edges or you've already cut your design, um, you would want to add some soap to that, but I'm going to show you what to do next. So you could leave your felted vessel like this and finish it, as I will show you in the next part of the video. You can even fold over your felted vessel. We're not done here, so it's going to be more sturdy than this, but if you wanted to, you could just continue with your vessel making it straight like this. But at this point now, I am going to cut the shape of my vessel. Normally as well, if you are making it straight, you may want to chop the edge at this point, add some soap to it, and begin doing the finishing process um, with a straighter, neater edge. And if it's going out of shape, you can always give it a little bit of a cut again. I'm just going to roll these edges a little bit more to tighten them up a tiny bit more to give it more structure before I cut my shape. So the felt's going to um, shrink in the direction that you roll it. So I'm rolling my felt on an angle because my edges have kind of stretched out like this. So I'm ready to cut out my wave shape. I'm going to place a dry towel on my table. And I just want to quickly give my project a dry because there's a few different methods you can do for your felted vessels. You can create your own templates where you can print them out and then place them or pin them on and then cut the shape. And that is probably the best option for cutting a consistent shape in your vessel. Um, but for this project, another option is just to use a washable marker. This says permanent <laughs> and it draws a really nice line. So I'm actually going to use it because um, I used it for this one and it's completely come out of the felt, so I wouldn't say it's the most trustable permanent marker, which is great. It is by Bic, um, but I know the Sharpie ones don't come out. So you'll want to use a washable marker and you can simply just draw 
your wave shape onto your felt directly or the, any shape that you like. I would keep it quite simple at first, but you can make quite intricate shapes. So for this vessel, I have a little moon and star. And so you can see the star quite well. The moon's gone a bit out of shape, but you can make some pretty cool shapes in your felted vessels. Oh yeah. So while I'm showing you this felted vessel and I have two different shapes here, um, you can also create this rounded dish bowl like shape. And this one was made by creating a round resist and just simply felting over top of that and then cutting a hole out of the top. And so that is how you would get this shape. And so I have added a little candle to go in this one so that I can have my little moon and star lit up. All right, onto, <laughs> All right, onto the rest of the video, the finishing part of our vessel. This is the most important part for making our felted vessel shape. So I'm going to continue with the wave. I feel like I have enough experience now with my wave and I'm just gonna draw that out So if, if you don't feel comfortable drawing your wave, you can find an image on your computer and blow it up and use a piece of paper to trace around it and then cut it out and then place it on your felt project. You may want to bring your felt project to your computer um, to see the size. You need to blow it up. Um, otherwise, you can do the whole measurement thing and then measure it on your computer so that it prints out a proper size. And so now I have my wave and I'm pretty happy with this wave. So I'm just going to cut it out. I'm going to cut both sides. So I'm going to do both sides. I just find it easier to cut out this way, even though I am going to hack off the other side of the vessel. So now I have cut my wave shape out and it's not quite even. So I'm going to trim the edge so that it's perfect. And I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to keep. And so that's why I'm trimming them both. There is a little bit of a thin spot in my top one here, so I may cut that one off. But I'm not going to cut it off yet. I think what I'll do is felt my project and then cut it off closer to the end because I just haven't decided which wave is going to kind of turn out nicer. Um, for these projects, I think both waves turned out nice on either side, so I'm probably just being a little bit picky. So now that we've cut out our wave shape and we've tidied it up, um, you can turn your project like this because you may not be happy with this little bump in there, which I'm not. And so I'm planning to cut that off. And so I'm going to fold my project this way and I'm very happy with this smooth edge here, but not this pointed one here. So I'm just going to draw again on my project where I want to cut. For me, I need to draw it and I find cutting quite challenging. So I'm just going to draw it on and then cut it out. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's quite rounded now and I'm going to completely soak my entire felt in the water bring it back to my project, remove my dry towel, and I'm going to add some soap, especially to these edges. And I'm going to begin felting my project in the same way I did before. I'm going to roll my project evenly on all four sides. Probably about 10 rolls on each side for now. When I roll it on the edge side, I really like to get my hands on those edges so that those frayed edges can begin to felt nice and smooth. So I'm not applying too much pressure, it's just a little bit of pressure. And I might add some more water if my project is super soapy. And now I'm going to flip my project again like this. And I'm going to begin rolling it in this shape. And I'm going to flip it inside out. Give it a stretch. Continue rolling, just a few rolls. Then I'm going to turn it back to the original shape. It's a bit soapy, so I'm just gonna add some more water. And at this point, I'm going to begin working my edges. So what I like to do for my edges is I like to hold my project down with my hand and with my other hand, I'm going to just rub those edges back and forth. I'm just going to shimmy those edges and I'm going to work my way around and I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And I'm being quite gentle because it's merino wool. You can flip your project inside out and work it for a little while inside out as well. So 
So by this time, you just want to begin agitating your project and rolling it in all directions so that it begins to shrink nice and evenly. And the felt's going to shrink in the direction that you roll it. So I'm going to really work my little waves. Continue working my edges as I roll, getting in here in the little wave area. You may also want to turn your project in this direction and work your edges as well in this shape. And so I like to work all of my edges in all directions in, in, in every angle because it is a 3D felt vessel and so you're going to see all the sides. So I can already tell my felt waves are a little bit thin on the top, so I could have added a little bit more wool to thicken them up so that they would obtain more structure, but they're going to be fine by the time I'm done this. <laughs> Something else you can do is roll your wave in your hands very gently. And you'll do the other one. And you may also want to roll it in the opposite direction. I always like to roll it in the opposite direction to even it out. Otherwise, it will have these straight lines going through it. My edges aren't quite perfected yet, but we are getting somewhere with it. So with felting, I find that by the time you're almost finished your felt, it looks pretty bad. And you wonder, like, am I just bad at this or am I, am I doing something wrong? Um, and usually what I figured out is wrong is that the felt's just not finished. It just needs more time, more rolling. Place it on a dry towel and begin rolling it on the dry towel. That also felts things out more quickly. And just continue working your edges. Continue working them until they're perfect. Another solution is to make thicker felt. It's just a little bit easier to make structural felt when it's a bit thicker. And so I probably should have made mine a little bit thicker. This one obviously ended up being thicker somehow. Um, and so it's going to obtain a little more structure. But I can work this one where it's quite flimsy. Still, I can make it look quite perfect um, by just working my edges more and spending more time felting the project where it needs to be felted on those edges especially. And also giving it a stretch. Giving a stretch, pulling it in all directions. And then we'll continue rolling. Um, something you can do with your tips is you can roll them so that you get a pointed tip. I'm going to roll my other wave. By this time, though, I'm going to choose one of my waves, I think, and cut it off. Because I'm not sure if I like that. I don't know if I like this. It actually looks more like a duck, actually. It could be like a set of loons. So <laughs> I'm thinking, like, maybe I'll just keep it and be like, um, that's a set of loons. Like, yeah, like, down the river. It's kind of cute. Like, maybe some doves. Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll keep it this time because I've already done one with one wave. So I'll keep that. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to continue working my edges. So something you can do at the end if your edges aren't quite perfect, and it's what I do, is I take a needle, felting needle, and I begin poking any bumps and curves where they need to be poked in, just in case there are any little bumps, and that just helps finish the felt quite nicely. I'm just using my hands to shimmy back and forth. If you have too much water or too much soap, that can stop uh, the felt from finishing as well. So it's definitely a good balance between agitating and soap, thickness of the felt, I also like to finish my felted edges by rolling them towards the inside so that when it's dry, the inside is kind of the bad side. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to make both sides look perfect, but um, usually I choose one side to be the side that you can't see, and so I like to have my nicer edge on the inside, on the outside for pieces. They also need to be agitated, and the way I roll those on the inside is by rolling them up. And it's quite finicky. It really takes patience to do this and work with these tiny pieces. So you have to decide for yourself if this is something you enjoy. And so I'm really not happy with the, my edges completely at this point, so I'm getting a little bit more aggressive with the rolling. I'm going to roll them a little bit more tightly. And then I'm going to go in the other direction as well. So I'm just going to roll them more aggressively this way. And they're tightening up and becoming quite a nice shape now. But I'm going to do a little bit of work on those other edges. And becoming a little more aggressive with them. And you'll notice it's quite bumpy here. It's not very smooth. So that might be something, if it's earlier on, you could cut off and then felt, or it's something you could needle felt into shape at the end. Something else I usually like to do once my project is more into shape is give it a bit of a roll in my hand, and that just tightens everything up. Give it a toss. So I would say by now my project is almost done. And I'm going to grab my dry towel and begin finishing it on my dry towel. And I usually do finish all my projects at the end on a dry towel. So this is my piece of felt now and it's quite crinkly, but my edges are quite nice. They're definitely smoothing out besides a few little bumps here and there. So I'm going to roll it five times on each side or so on the dry towel. It does shrink up quite quickly on the dry towel, so I don't want to roll it too many times. 
And I really like to apply this rolling method at the end where I roll it on itself. It does give it a nice smooth finish. It gives it a smaller bubble crinkle. And you'll notice in felting, there is a bit of a bubble on, on the texture of your felt. And you can remove these bubbles by placing them into a resist or a shape and then ironing it or flattening it. Um, but I've just decided to own these bubbles. I decided I like the bubble texture. Some people have said they don't like it, but for me, this is felting, this is what it's all about, and I just love the bubble texture, so I'm finally owning it. I'm finally saying, no, that's okay, there's a bubble texture, I want it, I'm keeping it, and it's part of my felting. So I'm proud of that, I'm happy with that. <laughs> what I don't like is creases and shapes that are not smooth and perfect, but, but for me, my shapes need to be perfectly shaped. So I will continue with my edges, flipping my project out different ways, until everything's looking quite cute, quite dense, quite felted, it has structure. I might in the end just finish my waves so that they're more pointy. It's not going to be possible to fix it once it's dry besides with the needle felt tool. But you will not be able to shape it as you will be able to shape it now. So once you're happy with your edges, you may want to shape your felt a little bit. I have a little bit of a tall um, wave there, so I might pull and shape it because the felt is going to dry in the shape that you finish it and leave it to dry, which is actually quite amazing and quite nice about felting. So you can really mold it how you would like. So I have this felted vessel, which I used for this one to shape it. It fits, it fits in there quite nicely, um, but I'm thinking this is a little bit too, it's pretty close, but it's just a little bit, it's not quite big enough. This one might fit a little bit better. So I can really push it in there to create a nice shape. Then I'm going to shape my waves how exactly how I want them to be shaped. So we have a nice little vessel here, and I have my wave shape, the one that I didn't cut off, but I'm pretty happy with it. So that's how you do it, that's how you make your felted vessel with a shape. And I'm going to allow it to dry. I'm really not happy with the two, so I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut that off, actually. I changed my mind, I'm just going to cut it off, I don't like it. So I really feel like this could be, um, this edge could be felted. It could be re-wet and then worked on for a longer time so it's nice and round. I'm not going to do it now again, uh, but it could do that. Um, if your felt is like so felted, then you might not be able to work the edge as nicely. But I do find, especially with Reno Well, it's quite friendly and it does allow you to shrink it even more. And so you can really work that edge for a smooth edge. I don't recommend doing all your edges like that, but if you happen to cut a piece off that you don't like, um, it shouldn't be a problem and it shouldn't be too visible. It'll just kind of hide in there. So yeah, there we have our beautiful wave. Now I'm very happy with it. I'm much more happy with this wave now that the other side is off. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed making your felted vessel. And if there was anything I missed or anything you would like to see, uh, please leave a comment in the comments below and like and share this video. Also, if you think I should make some tutorials and some kits and you would rather have a kit to work from instead of working from scratch, then please let me know in the comments below.